Good evening and welcome to Outside the Box. It's the show that allows you to interact with those vying for your vote. And a quick reminder, we had invited all registered parties to be part of this show. Those that have so far accepted have featured on the show. Let's now take a look at, our, at, at how our results from our daily poll. We appreciate all those who have participated and given their views. Yesterday's question was, should voting be compulsory? 62% of our viewers voted no, while 29% of you agreed. And 7.4% were sitting on the fence. Today's question is, should political rallies be opened to students? Text your answer to a simple yes or no to 3592. The poll is open to Vodafone, Digicel and Ink users. Charges apply. Now joining me in studio tonight is Joe Wangambatha or Josiah Wangambatha from the Fiji Labour Party, a name many may not be too familiar with, but we're about to find out. If you are like to, if you like to ask uh, Joe Wangambatha a question, just text in uh, 3599 or call our studio phone 3302100. Mr. Wangambatha, welcome to the show. Hello. Now, I've been specifically told that you will come tonight to talk on land. Your focus tonight is on land. Now, let me refer you to uh, the party manifesto. Um, one of the, the, the things there is that Labour will waive the backdated arrears, this is the, the land leases, and review all rentals on a case-by-case -case basis to ensure that farmers are treated fairly. Yeah? So that's, that's what, what your, your manifesto is saying. Now, currently, as at as uh, end of 2013, the land arrears, yeah. Yeah, or the rent arrears, was around $20 million yeah. um, and more. Mm. Now, do you think this is fair to indigenous landowners, this particular proposition of your party? As we have uh, said, uh, we will uh, waive all those arrears and come closer with the fairness that needs to be accorded to the landowners. What about the, the landowners? They've been owed rent arrears all these years, and it's 20 million plus at the moment. The lease were not renewed. Those leases were not renewed. Yeah. It's just a fair, uh, an unfair calculation, a computer figure, so to speak. Okay, the so lease were not renewed. So the party will waive yeah. all back dead arrears? We will arrears. give due to where they belong. Okay. That's all. Now the party is accusing the current government for imposing unilateral decisions on land issues. Eh, for, or for, for indigenous Fijians. Now, do you agree, do you agree that that particular proposition sounds unilateral already? By, by the labor will, by the word will? C can you repeat your... Oh, sorry. Your party has uh, uh, accused the current government yeah. for imposing unilateral decisions on land matters. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, with labor saying that labor will waive the backdated arrears, yeah. By the word will, does, does that mean, does, mm. no, does that not mean that the decision or the provision is al already unilateral? In fact, what Labour stands for is the, um, the, the laws, the decrees that has been put in place by this government, mm. which is uh, taking away the rights of the landowners. We're talking, we, we concern more about the rights of the landowners. We cannot go deeper into those formulas if the rights are taken away from the landowners. That's more important. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at the, the decrease, the land use decree 36 of 2010, and then you tell you that with, uh, with section 29 of the 2013 constitution, there's no, no guarantee that uh, land belongs to the landowner. Mm. It can flow away. It can just go away. Okay, okay. So, so that's... Once, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, to another issue, uh, the proposition by Labour, it will negotiate 50-year leases for agricultural land at a rental of 10% of the UCV. Yep. Now, it, previous research have found that on a $100 lease money to be paid out, mm -hmm. $78 of that goes to the, to the, to the tenant, yep. $20 goes to the, the FSC or the government, and $2 goes to the landowners. Do yep. you think that that's a bit uh, unfair you're bringing back? This is this is this is this, this issue has been around for some time, and you're trying to uh, yeah. Our concern will be focused on a fairness of treatment between the landowner and the tenant. But how can that be if, if the calculation is hundred dollars is seventy eight goes to the tenant and two dollars goes to the landowners? How can that be fair? Under we, the proposition of we, the we are going to improve 
that from 6% to 10%, which is uh, of the UCV, 6% of the UCV, which is now paid. Mm -hmm. So we will increase that to 10% to 10%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Wakabada, there's been a, 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 a question that has been uh, filed in from one of the, from, from one of the, the, the viewers. Mm -hmm. extra, ex, extra, extremism and nationalism. Which one of those two is more threatening to democracy? Does that uh, concern land? No, that's, that's the viewers asking those questions to you as the okay. guest tonight. Okay, as the guest tonight on that uh, issue, uh, to, to, to make a decision to, to go away from uh, nationalism and come right down to Fiji Labour Party, so to speak, is not an easy decision, mm -hmm. especially after the upheavals and the instabilities of 2000. Uh, the early 2000. And then, when, um, when I now make the decision to come and uh, stand to choose between democracy and uh, um, dictatorship, I think we should all weigh that, the consequences, which one we should uh, prefer. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be identified with those that stand for democracy. Okay. Now, the Labour Party also is proposing to restore the entrenchment of NALTA and ALTA. Yep. Why? Because that will be fair, that is fair treatment of the tenant and the landowner. It's enshrined within those uh, acts. And now the, the land use decree has taken that out totally away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if that is true, then if we were to go back a few years, a few years back the li down the line, there was some argument on this ALTA and NALTA. On ALTA, uh, lawyers and, and, and politicians have been saying, that um, uh, through our on Alta, through Alta, landowners have very little, little say over their land. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as, as for Nalta, the NLTB administers the land um, to ensure that all members of the public have access to a native land. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. How can that be fair to the landowners and the tenants? We'll when Alta doesn't, doesn't give landowners a say, or give them very yeah, little say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We we're looking at the the protection of the of the duties of the N, uh, TLTB, formerly known as NLTB. They are the ones that should be charged with the duties, the protection of landowners. And uh, all we need, all we will need to do is to try and come up with the with legislations whereby we can improve the the use of those land. To by, by the tenants. It, it's, it's totally between the tenant and the land, uh, landowners. Yeah. Mr. Wakamada. Stay with us in our next segment. Moses Mbuletavo from Sudalpa joins us. Welcome back. Join our discussion live tonight by texting in your questions to 3599 or call our studio line 330200. And remember, you can have your say in our daily poll. The question is still, should political parties uh, be opened to students? Pardon? The question is still, should political rallies be opened to students? Simply text yes or no to 3592 to all Vodafone, DTCL, and Ink users. Now, Mosese Mbulatavo from Sudelpa joins us. He may be green to politics, but don't just count him out yet. Let's find out what he can offer to you. Mr. Mbulitabo, welcome to the show. Some people are asking, who are you? Well, I'm Moses uh, Mbulitabo, as you've said, uh, Mika. I'm a lawyer by profession. I specialize in constitutional law, institutional, uh, international law, and uh, land laws. Mm. What do you think of the land bank? Uh, it'll be the first time uh, where uh, land will be designated. Eh? From uh, Previously, native land was only administered and controlled by native land. But for the first, for uh, uh, having a land bank, uh, freehold land, native land, and crown land will be controlled by the state, and that will be a conflict of interest, as opposed as the interest of the state in regards to the economy, and the interest of the customary landowners may conflict, and uh, it really needs to be balanced out, and proper policy thinking must be done before any framework uh, should be implemented. Mm. Does that uh, concern you as a, a young lawyer? I, I'm told that you are uh, just 32 years old and you're already a lawyer. Does it concern you as a young lawyer oh. and an indigenous Fijian? Of course, it concerns us. Uh, 
the proprietary rights of our tribes, uh, all those land titles were uh, registered as uh, native land titles with NLTB. Uh, we can have implications eh, through the policies of the land bank where the consultation uh, rights of the land owning units could be deprived, um, undermined by the state's interest to economic growth. Mm -hmm. eh? The intentions of the current government uh, is that uh, this is an alternative for landowners. Um, you know, it, it, uh, um, it doesn't uh, charge survey fees. And the process of uh, acquiring a land for lease is, is very, very fast. And it's good for investment for the country. Uh, well, uh, Land Bank was uh, designed for investor confidence. And uh, secondly, uh, Land Bank was brought about to remove the bureaucracy in regards to NLTB. But uh, the consultation process where the landowners are bringing, uh, brought in uh, rather to, to, to have the, the interest protected. I think there is no lease structure yet with the Land Bank. And uh, most of the uh, trusteeship role are performed by government. Uh, the commissioners and the uh, uh, provincial administrations are, are trustees of uh, land owning uh, for the land owning units. Not like NLTB, where the trustees are appointed by the Matangalis. Mm. This previous, the previous uh, guest tonight, uh, uh, we had touched a bit on the on his party's uh, intention to restore the reentrenchment of the Nalta and Alta. Uh, under the constitution. Um, w w did it exist in the previous constitution? It existed as an uh, entrance provision under uh, chapter 13 of uh, group rights. The, uh, the current constitution, the 2013 constitution, has removed uh, the entrance provision. Now that uh, customary rights has been subject to a limitation clause on the Bill of Rights, the entrance provision that were there in regards to section 64.1 where uh, the GCC had uh, appointment of 14 members into the Senate. If nine of the 14 members do not approve any amendment uh, in regards to NALTA or Fijian Affairs Act, those provisions uh, cannot be changed. This was a protective principle to protect vital interests to land. And what, is, been, what is your reading of the 2000 Constitution on the same issue? 2013. 2013 Constitution, uh, according to Section 47.3 uh, of the Constitution, it says that the bill can be you know, more faster to approve. Uh, a motion, a move of the motion in the morning can raise up the motion in the afternoon the, the, the parliament can uh, on simple majority. Whereas in the previous constitution there were entrance provisions in regards to the approval. Sorry, there's been a, a, a text from, the, from uh, one of the viewers and the question is uh, mobile. Uh, what is your view about continuing uh, free education after elections? Uh, the text uh, was texting from the number uh, this, uh, yeah, 7036 digits, sir. So Dalpa's position, as it's enshrined in the uh, uh, manifest, I think we need to review uh, free education. I think Fiji should not end up like Greece, where everything was free. And uh, now I think the IMF has uh, done a uh, bailout for that because of free. Nothing is free. Uh, there's expenditure that the government will have to incur in its budget. And uh, currently the government is uh, spending about $2 billion, And revenue coming from FOCA is $1.5 billion. So we really need to minimize cost and expenditure. Uh, people to have ownership in the education and not the state to own our degrees and accreditation. Okay. Now, a question to you. What, what do you think of people who are involved in graffiti in this time of election? Do you think it's, it's, it's good or bad? Uh, the advice uh, that I can give is them to follow the, the legal and constitutional process set out in the electoral process that we are now transiting to democracy from a dictatorship position. I think there needs to be a transition plan, a political reconstruction mandate that will be there uh, for us to negotiate and bring about national concession eh, in regards to uh, reconciliation and other things. We have to keep our political will intact and follow the law uh, because no one is above the law. This final question. What, what, what do you think people should vote for you into parliament? You, have, you are contesting other, with other um, candidates out there, 250 or more. What, what do you think people should vote for you and not them? I'm young. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, going into parliament, parliament is a legislative body to make law. Mm. Uh, we really need to make, uh, to appoint people to go in, to elect them I mean, into parliament, to make laws that an impact, uh, you know, a structure of government that we can transform people into leaders and leaders to be agents of change in society, where a structure of government uh, can be designed, where people's needs are known, understood, mm. and uh, people's dreams to be fulfilled. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mbulitavo, uh, Mary from Wakaya is on the line. Now, Mbulitavo, Mary.
Bula Vinaka. Bula Vinaka. What was your question for Mr. Bula Tabu tonight? Mr. Bula Vinaka. Yeah, Bula, uh, we can I hear you. I would like yes. to... Um, what uh, is the Stodelpa can do... Uh, what uh, the Stodelpa can do about if a public would like to lease the land? Mr. Bula Tabu, you heard the question? What is your answer to that? If public want to lease land, yeah, what is what what, what can you do about that? Well, Sudelpa, so as it's already in the Native Land Trust Act, Section Nine provides for conditions to lease land. I think the the board now is the ultimate uh, heir of native land. Uh, when Sudelpa so government comes in, we'll see into the interest of um, leasing. Although uh, native land cannot be transferred or sold, the only access for the economy is leasing uh, to provide better leasing conditions. Uh, the manifesto as it reads, we are giving to first time business people who are really going to develop their land a two years free lease and uh, for government to pay those lease and other concessions at least to develop them to become entrepreneurs. We love it, Mr. Bulatavo. After the break, in our final segment, we speak to Pedro Turanga from the People's Democratic Party. Welcome back. Now remember, you can participate in our daily poll. The question tonight is, should particular rallies be open to students? Text in your answer, yes or no, to 3592. Joining us in studio tonight is Penny Turanga from the People's Democratic Party. He's another new, uh, newbie to the political arena. And um, let's hear from him. Mr. Turanga, welcome to Outside the Box. Welcome. Okay. Like the previous uh, uh, guest, you know, I asked them the same question. You are a new face to politics. That's Who it. are you? I'm Pinturanga from uh, Ra. This is a place that uh, originally has been said. Now it's been said to be to be the poorest place, uh, poorest province. But uh, we asked the question: uh, How much empowerment has been given by the government to Ra? Uh, me as a person, I quali uh, my qualification include a uh, diploma in uh, in uh, education. Mathematics and Science, and a Bachelor for for Arts in uh, Economics, uh, Public Administration, and Human Resource, mm. plus Masters in uh, Business Administration. I have been uh, working for the Ministry for Education for 32 years, uh, rather for 33 years. 32 years as a principal, two years as a as an assistant teacher, two years as a, um, as a uh, HOD, and then seven years in, in the Ministry for Education. In the seven years, after uh, seven years, I was told to to uh, to have a rest because I have reached uh, 55. Okay. Then I went to join the community work yeah, in in places that I've uh, that uh, I'm living in, uh, like Cornivia and uh, and the Bulebo housing, and uh, I'm involved in the youth group uh, with the teams, uh, clubs. I'm the director for uh, the Bulebo nights and being a board member for the uh, National Fiji uh, Rugby League. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Turanga. Do you agree with the current government's uh, policies on education? Well, they have uh, this uh, free education. We call it uh, tuition free education. It's not free. Somebody has to pay. And there's the other part of it. Once you become educated, we go up to write Form 6 and you get uh, your university uh, certificates. When you come back, there is no education. There is no more job for you, even though you got the certificate. So there is no linkage between this area, education and outside of education. We don't find the job. So right, like we have now in the, in the job market, there's a lot of people who are unemployed. They have certificates, but they cannot find the job. So there is, there is something wrong. There is something wrong. Uh, and, and it, your party can provide that, uh, the missing link? Yes. This is mass education. We want quality education. The buzzword here for us is quality education. We want quality education linked to the jobs, mm -hmm. linked to what they will have to become after they have their qualification. Mr. Turanga, this yes. MLA from Motok is on the line. Uh, Bulubinak MLA? Bulubinak MLA? Bulubinak. Yeah. Bulubinak, sir. Bulubinak. Bula, I have a question. Yes. Um, how has PDP responded to land ownership issues so far during the campaign? 
land ownership uh, so far uh, pdp has uh, is not uh, with is not with this uh, regimes uh, arrangement for uh, land bank we are totally out of it uh, pdp pdp is, is not uh, supporting this because because let's suppose uh, we give our land and uh, we are not uh, certain we are not uh, pretty sure what time this this land will come back to us after someone has taken it, it might be sold to somebody else and after that somebody else for the 99 years and then the landowners are not uh, sure what time they will receive the land back mm. so we are not with it so what alternative another another viewer is texting mm. uh, what al alternative is pdp uh, proposing as opposed to land back well empower empower the landowners empower and how do you do that yes give them uh, give them uh, facilities whereby they can improve the land to be productive. Okay. Yeah. And how, just, just elaborate more on that. Pe uh, people would want to know how uh, is that done? Right. So there, these linkages, there should be linkages between the farmers yeah. and the markets yeah. and outside the markets to other uh, countries. This is not with us now. Sounds like yes. a freebie to, to the landowners. Yes. Is it? What is it? So it's like a freebie, you know, you're giving them something, you know, uh, back no. in the old days, you empower them with uh, ah, facility, okay. with equipment and, yeah. and, and, you know, with a certain funding from government and, and they don't do anything. No. And you're trying to, uh, your party is trying to do the same thing? No, no. They will, they will work for whatever they receive. If they're using the money or if they're using other tools, this will be paid back by them from their products in the farm. Hmm. Hmm. Just back to education, There's the, the, the acting permanent secretary for education now is, is telling head teachers on the country in a, in a short uh, workshop uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. is telling them, uh, you know, make sure that uh, students, especially those in secondary school, mm -hmm. are, 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 not, uh, uh, are not to be seen in political rallies. Do you agree with that statement? The statement, uh, they should, they should, especially the voters, they should be seen, uh, or political parties should go out to schools where voters are. As we so know, you disagree with it? You're saying secondary school students who are 18? Yeah, voters. Who will be voting should yeah. be present in political rallies? Political rallies and also in the schools, where with whatever means that uh, they can get the information. They must be well informed before coming to the uh, ballot box. The, the, the Acting Permanent Secretary for Education is yeah. saying they may be maneuvered, they'll be misled by yeah. politicians. You agree with that? Uh, well, if, like, if, if the door is opened to uh, students to go and, and attend political rallies. Yes. I, I think they should. They should, be, they should be allowed to go and to be well informed about, about, uh, about the parties, about their rights. And Which do you think politicians will uh, will misdirect them, will uh, um, you know um, mislead them, or maneuver their minds in, in in such a way to confuse them? You know, they're, they're still young. Yes, but the, the the problem is these students do not know the rights. They must know their rights. Now, what we have now, this regime, is cutting off all these rights and giving them uh, papers in the school whereby it's, it might be biased, right? So if the political parties, if they come to poor rallies, that should be a good way whereby they can get information from, uh, from parties. That's wrapped us up for this week. We'll announce the results of today's poll next week. Remember, you can still text in your answers to our poll. The question will be open until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Again, the question is, should political rallies be open to students? Text in your answer, yes or no, to 3592. But before I leave, a quote of the week, in the words of genius Albert Einstein himself, politics is more difficult than physics. Join me again on Monday as we continue to profile candidates from various political parties. Until then, have a great weekend. See you next week.